Hello, worm people. Today, our message is going to be about how to winterize your worm beds. I know we've done some articles on these, but I kind of wanted to give you a visual of it. So we're gonna take you through some of the things that you can do. Some of them I can show you, some of them I'm just gonna have to talk about because I don't have the means or the facility here to do that. But one of the things that I wanted to show you was if you have bins like the Bagsters or wooden bins or like we have these plastic crates here, uh, one of the things that you can do is you can line them around them with bales of hay or straw and then you can top them off with either a piece of plywood or a tarp or something like that. You can also top them off with extra compost or hay or straw. Um, we've got some straw here we're gonna top ours off with. We don't normally use the bales of hay. I just did this as an illustration because it doesn't get that cold here in Georgia. But maybe Wisconsin or New York or places like that, if you have your bins outside, you would want to do that. You can also use uh, the, the sheets of insulation that they sell at Lowe's that's uh, like two to three inches thick and you can put that around your worm bed as well, especially if you're outside in the snow. Now, if it's a windrow, you would just wanna add more compost, but you want to leave that, leave some distance in between some of the area that you're putting the new uh, compost, because when that compost heats up, you want the worms to be able to move away from it if, if they need to or if they want to, but you want to form some heat in that worm bin or worm bed uh, so that the worms can go into it and it can heat up that worm bed some. Um, if you're doing it in bins like our mortar trays like we have over here, what we're doing over here with those um, is normally I would only put one to two inches of my bedding or compost in those, but because it's winter time, we're filling those about three quarters of the way full. Um, we won't be harvesting those until spring anyway, so that'll give the extra time for them to um, eat down on that compost. We're also going to add some uh, of this, this straw on the top of those bins, and then we also have those covered with a piece of cardboard and bubble wrap. So that should be all that we need here in Georgia uh, inside this building for the worms to stay warm enough uh, that we won't lose them through the winter. Now, in the summer, we only put about one to two inches of bedding in those um, to start with, and then as we feed, um, we just build up those bins. But because it's winter time, we are starting with more material. And um, after about six inches, your material, if it has uh, material in it that hasn't broken down, will cause the microbes to heat it up and give you some heat in those bins. So um, we, did, <laughs> we didn't have enough in these, and I did have a few of the red wigglers crawl on me. Um, when we had a cold snap a few weeks ago. So um, I went back in and added more material to all of them. So um, I think we figured out that problem. Now the other thing that you can do is if you have bins outside is you can dig down in the earth, build around it, um, but you wanna leave you know, enough up out of the dirt so that if it rains, all that water's not going into your bin. Um, so you kind of want to have a slope away from that bin so that that water doesn't stay in it. Um, but the, the ground, uh, you know, only gets uh, to a certain temperature and it will keep the worms warm enough that you don't really have to uh, worry about having to put any extra bedding or anything in there. But the thing with that is then trying to get it back out or work in that bin. So I will leave that up to your own discretion. Now, um, some of y'all have sub pods that are in your, um, uh, your raised beds. Again, you just wanna put extra compost, not so much extra food, but you wanna put extra compost in there. Um, it can be hay, it can be leaves and straw and um, any 
pre-composted material that you might have. Um, just put some extra in your sub pod for that. If you have the urban worm bag or the Mimi's uh, worm hut, just you can add some more material in that as well. Now you can also use shredded cardboard or layers of cardboard. Um, that would help as well. The main thing is you want to cut back a little bit on your water. You don't want to have them as moist as you normally would because that water will freeze and that will cause your worms to freeze. Now in the event that your worms do happen to die in the winter because they, they weren't kept, they generally have enough cocoons laid and the cocoons will survive through frozen winters. Um, so come spring, those worms would hatch and you would just carry on. So don't get rid of your worm bed if you lose, or your worm bedding if you lose your worms through the winter. Um, if you're able and you can move your worm bins inside, say into a basement. Now around here we don't have basements, but we do generally have garages or shops. Um, you could even build a mini um, hoop house. Um, we did the hoop houses when we had it in our backyard. And um, if I can get a, get a photo of one of those, I'll try to put that in the video and show you how to uh, how hoop house would work. And But again, even those with those hoop houses, you're still gonna need to put some extra compost or extra material in your worm bed. So I think I've covered all the uh, ways, you know, windrows, the same thing goes for the, the wedges. If you have a wedge, you just wanna add a little more material so that the worms can um, have a, a deeper place to go when it gets cold. Another thing you can do is you can top it off with plastic um, and just to kind of show you the way we have this one set up with the straw is we, we have our worm bedding in here and um, which is our uh, pit moss, our manures, our peanut holes, and we feed half this bed at a time. That way the worms can move over if it gets hot because sometimes as we're adding this material, um, we're having to add more of it so it will heat up. So we want to give the worms a place to move away from. And then today I'm topping off all of my beds with this wet straw. Now we have it wet because again, it doesn't get that cold here. But if you're in um, some of the northern states, you may want to put that in dry. Just make sure the material bedding underneath is moist. You don't want it to be completely dry, but you just want to cut back on that amount of watering. Um, if you're feeding them food scraps, make sure you got plenty of dry material under the food scraps before you feed them so that that doesn't freeze as well. Um, and I think that's about it. If you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. I answer and acknowledge all of my content or comments. So I will try to answer any questions that I may have left off. Um, or if I didn't explain it well enough, I will try to give more detail. Um, so just to kind of give you a idea though, with the worm bins that we have over here, I'm, I'm just gonna kind of take a little bit of this uh, bedding or the straw and I will show you what I'm talking about there's my worm hut if you guys haven't seen it already I do have these available online so if you want to support me um, please go out and get you one one of the things that I love about it is it does not have any zippers on the bottom um, the thing about the zippers on the bottom is they get corroded and it makes it very uh, frustrating to get them unzipped. Um, the ones on the top, on this one it has one zipper and this zipper kind of overlays, see if you can see it, how it overlays the start of the zipper. Um, see how it's got a good three inches of overlap on that so the worms do not um, try to crawl out of this zipper like some of the other worm bags out there that have two zippers you have to wind up putting a cotton ball between the 
two zippers that meet up because your worms find that little bit of light and they they come out um because they can they see that there's a hole there so they can come out um this one we just started it a few weeks ago um you can see down in there but uh we got some mushrooms growing in there but uh, i'm gonna add some straw in this today because again we're not planning on taking any of these worms out of anything until spring so that's one of the drawbacks to using straw in the summer is because you um it doesn't get eaten for it it takes it a long time for it to break down so just to kind of show you what i plan on doing is we are just going to add the straw to the top of this bin um looks really good got some nice red wigglers in there and they are still throwing cocoons right now so because we haven't had any really cold weather for an extended period of time but and i may not have grabbed quite enough of the straw but just to kind of give you an idea you'd want to put about a half inch to an inch of straw over the top and um and then just place your bubble wrap back on the top that'll keep it moist where it can be broken down but that's how we're planning to do these i don't have these labeled um simply because i am not going to bother these bins until spring i'm going to let the eggs stay in them and hatch um <coughs> we're gonna try that i know in the past i have sifted and pulled out the cocoons but we were doing that with the euros because we want to keep them all the same size because we sell most of our euros as um bait and with bait you want to keep everything the same uh, size so it's good to to sift every 21 days but with the red wigglers because we sell those as a um, um, mixed you know um, uh, sizes uh, bed run that's the word I was trying to use so we, we sell these off as bed run which means you get sizes from t90 babies up to mature worms so I don't see a reason why they can't hatch in these bins um, and we can always, once we do sift, we can pull those out, reset our bins, and possibly put more in our other bins. Now, we may pull some of these out to put in our Baxters because we are trying to up our, um, our uh, production here and to keep from having to buy so many worms. Um, we may uh, sift these at some point, but right now they're going to sit still because we are working on getting... Um, these four sections filled with the bins. Um, we have gotten quite a bit of bins done. Now, each one of these sections holds 180 pans. So we've got three sections done. Now, this one, we still have one more to go on the top. Um, but I told Tabitha until we really needed to, we could always come back and add that fifth, uh, fifth one up. But right now, just to make it simpler for us when we're feeding to, um, not have to go up so high, we're going to wait to put that last row in when we have everything filled. So, um, these two here won't, they won't have 180, they'll have about 150 or something like that. And then... As I told y'all, we were using the mortar trays that we had left over from when we, you know, were doing it the other way. So we did these last two rows with the mortar, mortar trays, but I need 50 more mortar trays to finish up these two rows. But this will be the only two rows that has the mortar trays. And let me tell you, there's a big difference in dealing with those than dealing with these bus pans. Those bus pans are very light. Those mortar trays, when you get them, the material in them, they're a little bit cumbersome and heavy. So um, as those tear up and break, I probably will not buy anymore. 
and yeah. then we'll eventually just come back because we use screws in that so we could easily take those laddered portions apart and then convert it over to bus pans that way we're not dealing with those heavy mortar trays um, but for now we are going to fill it up but like I said as they tear up and break we probably will will just stop using them um, and that wraps it up for our winterizing your worm bed if you guys like I said have any questions leave your questions and comments below and we'll be glad to answer them for you until next time y'all have a wonderful day